Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm Jay Berman. Uh, a few weeks ago, I said to my friend Bob Young over here, I said, I'm going to make you an offer that you can't refuse. And uh, what I did is I asked him if he'd like to share a show singing some Sinatra classics for a Zoom thing on Osher Theater World. Well, you know what? He didn't refuse. So Bob Young and I are going to present some songs uh, that Frank Sinatra sang, backed by some great big band arrangements. Uh, many Sinatra fans who grew up with his music will instantly recognize. Uh, we in no way are attempting to do a Sinatra uh, impression or impersonation. Nobody could do that. Uh, I've never heard anybody who really can sound like Sinatra, really. But we're only going to revisit some of this marvelous music that he made so well known. Uh, as Elton John said, Frank was the best ever, and there isn't even a close second. That's what Elton said. Now, we'll be singing some uh, well-known uh, hits that span the musical life of Frank, Francis Albert Sinatra, a boy from Hoboken, New Jersey, who became uh, the vocal icon of his age. Each of these songs uh, tell us something about Sinatra and explore his particular sound and style and about the incredible, indelible uh, mark he made on American popular music. We hope you enjoy sharing these songs with us, uh, even though, unfortunately, Frank won't be singing them. Oh, well. Take it away, Bob. Thanks, Jay. Um... It's a great privilege to sing these songs uh, and a heck of a lot of fun, too. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Frank's first big hit, All or Nothing at All. It was written in 1939 uh, by Arthur Altman and Jack Lawrence. Sinatra recorded it that year, but it took until 1943 when it was reissued by Columbia uh, to actually uh, announce that Frank Sinatra was the real deal. During that period, Sinatra had become a sensation, and he had changed the form of popular vocal music. In 1939, Sinatra was 23 years old. He had grown up in Hoboken, New Jersey, uh, and after quitting school and telling his father he was going to make his way as a singer, he came to New York, and he found a place as a member of the Harry James Orchestra. This would begin his run with the greatest bands and arrangers of the war and post-war periods. Sinatra would change the relationship between singers and their orchestras. When All or Nothing at All was recorded in 1939, the record was labeled The Harry James Orchestra with vocals by Frank Sinatra. When it was reissued four years later, it was promoted as a song by Frank Sinatra accompanied by the Harry James Orchestra. I guess timing is everything. War clouds were gathering and the song became an inspiration to an anxious country. Talent is everything, too. All or Nothing at All gave Frank Sinatra a vehicle dis to display a unique vocal dexterity. The song was written with a loose rhythm and inviting intervals that allowed S Sinatra to craft a new approach to popular vocal music. It was no longer the notes on the page that made the song, nor necessarily the composer or arranger. With Frank, the singer was the primary ingredient in the success of the song. Yes, the compositions and the charts were important, Sinatra had a deep respect and understanding and deference to the genius of songwriters and arrangers and orchestra leaders and musicians. But he established the singer, the guy or the gal out front, who in the end makes the song come alive and creates the experience of listening to the song. All or Nothing at All became the mark for songwriters and arrangers. A piece had to be written big and expansive and make room for the vocal genius and the kind of storytelling that Frank Sinatra brought to the American Songbook. The story in this song, If You Can't Give Me All Your Love, I Don't Want Any Of It, began for Frank an autobiographical tour through some of the greatest songs, arrangements, orchestrations of all time. Frank Sinatra sang from his own life, his own experience, his own joys and pains. In every song, every performance, he put his life, his successes and failures on display. Take a bit of this tour with us today, all or nothing. <laughs> Love, 
never appeal to me If your heart never could yield to me Then I'd rather have nothing at all I said all or nothing at all It's love, there is no in between. Why begin and cry for something that might have been? No, I'd rather, rather have nothing at all. Kiss in your eyes, the touch of your hand makes me weak, and my heart it may go dizzy and fall. And if I fell under the spell of your call, I would be be caught in the undertow. Well, you see, I've got to say no, no, oh, or nothing at all. <laughs> Don't bring your lips so close to my cheek. Don't smile, or I'll be lost beyond recall. The kiss in your eyes, the touch of your hands makes me weak. And my heart may go dizzy and fall. Under the spell of your call Don't you know I will be caught in the undertow So you see I've just got to say no No Hey, what a great start. Wow, that's a great song. What, what year was that, uh, I know it was early 40s, right? It was written in 1939. Uh, he recorded it, and then he recorded it again in 43. And that was when it was a big hit. <clears throat> yeah, it was one of his first real He also recorded it in 1966. And uh, those of you who are listening close at home uh, and know uh, Frank's catalog, um, uh, it was the Nelson Riddle arrangement that I sang. Uh, trying to, to, to sing it like Frank might have sung it uh, when he was singing with Harry James. Classic, classic song. <laughs> Great. All right, let's move up a little bit in, in some time. Um, uh, Sinatra used some of the great big band arrangers of all times. Gordon Jenkins, Billy May, Don Costa, Quincy Jones, and particularly Nelson Riddle, Riddle who did that last one, to name a few. Uh, Along with his vocals, it really was the arrangement that really set the stage for that unmistakable Sinatra sound and, and made his music so memorable and unique. Uh, first selection I'm going to do is uh, from My Fair Lady, Get Me to the Church on Time. Remember that song? A little pretty fun song done by, uh, you know, whatever the guy's name was, who was the father. And... Uh, 
About a decade later, though, uh, Sinatra was preparing a tour with Count Basie and Quincy Jones and the Count Basie Orchestra. And Quincy reinvented the song as an up-tempo arrangement with a long opening riff. And Sinatra used it as an opener and chance to walk on stage, wave to everybody, soak up the applause, and after a bit, he'd cue the band to kick off the vocal uh, start of the arrangement. This version is taken from the uh, Natra at the Sands album, great album, with Quincy Jones conducting the Count Basie Orchestra. Frank often used this song to open his shows in Vegas and elsewhere for many years. Now I remember sitting in McCormick Place in Chicago seeing Frank with the Count Basie Orchestra open with this very number. Uh, and that was the second half of the show. The first half of the show was my favorite jazz trio ever, still probably is, the Oscar Peterson Trio. So it was just a great show, one of the best I've ever seen. So let's, let's, uh, let's do the Sinatra opener and we'll see how it goes. Getting married in the morning Ding dong, the bells are gonna chime Pull out the stopper Let's have a whopper Get me to the church on time I gotta be there in the morning Spruced up and looking in me prime Girls, come and kiss me Show how you'll miss me Get me to the church on time if I'm dancing, roll up the floor. If I'm whistling, whisk me out the door. I'm getting married in the morning. Ding dong ding, they're gonna chime. Some bloke is able, lift up the table. Get me to the church, get me to the church. Pete say, get me to the church on time. If I'm flying, shoot me down. If I'm wooing, get her out of town. Cause I'm getting married in the morning. Ding dong ding, they're gonna chime. Take out the compass, let's have a rumpus. Get me to the church, get me to the church. Be sure and get me to the church. Thank you. Hey, it's all about the arrangement for you, Jay. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. As I say, he had these great, great arrangers, and uh, it, it's really, it was really wonderful still to listen to this stuff. Yeah. I love that music. Yep, for sure. Really? Uh, but as you know, of course, Sinatra also knew a good song when he saw one. This next one was written by Cole Porter in 1943. Anything for his musical, uh, 1934 for his musical Anything Goes. It was sung in the show and in the 1936 film by Ethel Merman. Sinatra recorded the song in 1953. It was arranged by Neil Hefty and included Sinatra's, and it was included in Sinatra's first album for Capitol Records, Songs for Young Lovers. It's a good debate whether the song makes the singer or whether the singer makes the song. But now, uh, by now, Sinatra understood his own genius and what he could do with a song and arrangement. But he also understood great songwriting and he wanted to sing the best songs. This is one of them. I get a kick out of you. My story is much too sad to be told, but practically everything leaves me totally cold. The only exception I know is the case when I'm out on a quiet street. 
fighting vainly the old ennui and suddenly turn and see from champagne Your alcohol doesn't move me at all So tell me why should it be true That I get a kick out of you Some they may go for cocaine I took even one sniff It would bore me terrifically too Yet I get a kick out of you I get a kick every time I see you standing there Bob. All right. You know, Sinatra, uh, well, the arrangers, uh, that was, uh, that was hefty. They, they don't give you a lot of help, uh, which really. Oh, tough. They're real tough. Really tough really to think get that the right notes. Sinatra to was a really great talent, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he wasn't so bad. <laughs> All right. Next song I'm going to do for you was 1964, Fly Me to the Moon. It was originally written to be a sentimental waltz by Bart How Howard. You know, fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Well, Quincy Jones took it and turned it into a 4-4 typical Sinatra hard swinger and recorded it also on the Sinatra at the Sands album. The song was originally titled, In Other Words. But Peggy Lee, who also recorded the song, didn't like the title, so they changed it for her. You know, these girls all get their way, right? Uh, and they changed it to Fly Me to the Moon, which, of course, is the opening line of the song. Uh, the Sinatra rendition eventually was even piped up to the astronauts on the Apollo moon mission, which seems appropriate, and Frank thought it was pretty cool. Fly Me to the Moon. Ain't no waltz no more. Fly me to the moon, let me play amongst the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, baby, kiss me. Fill my heart with song Let me sing forevermore You are all I long for All I worship and adore In other words Please be true In other words Here we 
heart and soul Let me sing forevermore You are all I long for All I worship and adore In other words Please be true In other words That's great, Jay. Fantastic. Um, you know, uh, you're sitting there in front of the sands, uh, and uh, I'm just outside Carnegie Hall. Uh, we're having a we're having a pretty pretty good uh, cross continent uh, gig going here, I think. Um, but uh, of course, he was featured uh, on that particular evening with some of his friends from the Rat Pack, and uh, the Rat Pack was not particularly important. Uh, to Sinatra's music, but it was important to Sinatra the man, uh, and, uh, and and particularly Sinatra the star. Uh, being part and eventually the leader of the Rat Pack put him into the action in Hollywood in the 50s and kept him in the spotlight in the 60s and the 70s. The original Rat Pack was formed by Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. I didn't know that uh, in the middle 1950s. Uh, Sinatra was an original member of some Hollywood celebrities uh, who could gather at Bogey's house in Holmby Hills. Story goes that uh, Bacall named the group when she met the men returning from a hard night on the town and exclaimed, you guys look like a pack of rats. After Bogey and Bacall departed the scene, Sinatra became the head rat and began gathering his own group, including Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, and Joey Bishop. They entertained uh, in Las Vegas, as it looks like they're going to tonight there, Jay, uh, and famously made a series of pretty good films, including Ocean's Eleven in 1960. Here's a clip from a charity concert in St. Louis in 1965. Uh, we're going to go to it just for the fun of it. Um, and, um, by the way, uh, you'll see the young Johnny Carson, this is 1965, um, who was uh, asked to be the MC for this particular event. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he did a great job MCing and he did a little singing too. So uh, let's see whether we can uh, make the Rat Pack come alive here. Right. I gotta catch a train soon, are you? <laughs> what are you complaining about? I gotta go to a bar mitzvah in a minute.
Well, hey, um, those guys had Frank's back, uh, and he needed it. Uh, this was the middle of the '60s, and uh, he was uh, he, he he was he was working hard to, to keep up uh, uh, in a lot of ways. Um, his career, 60 years, spanned a period of lots of great changes in popular music. As I mentioned at the top, he was responsible for putting the singer out front in the big band era and stepping away from the sheet music and putting the life into the song. For most of his musical life, though, he was always trying to keep pace and to adapt to what was new and important in popular music. In the late 50s, it was the blues. Sinatra's singing style and his lifestyle were well suited to the blues, but he had to learn it, and he did. The song was written by Dolores Vicky Silver and arranged by Nelson Riddle, first recorded by Sinatra in 1955, Learning the Blues. The tables are empty, the dance floor's deserted, you play the same love songs, it's the tenth time you've heard it, that's the beginning, just one of the clues, you've had your first lesson in learning the blues. The cigarettes you light One after another Won't help you forget her And the way that you love her You're only burning The torch you can lose But you're on the right track For learning the blues When you're When you're out in a crowd, the blues will haunt your memory. The nights when you don't sleep, that whole night you're crying. But you can't forget her, soon you even stop trying. the blue when you're a home alone the blues will taunt you constantly when you're out in a crowd the blues will haunt your memory the nights when you don't sleep that whole night you're crying but you can't forget her Soon you'll even stop trying You'll walk the floor And you'll wear out your shoes When you feel your heart break You're learning the blues Okay, um, it wasn't only the blues. Sinatra had to make his peace with a lot of the changes that were taking place in popular music in the late 50s and through the rest of his career. One change he did not embrace was rock and roll. But he always knew a good moment, and one of those was when Elvis Presley returned from the army. Sinatra was doing a television variety show at that time, and on May 12, 1960, he hosted Elvis, and they did this one and only little duet. Now we got it. We work in the same way, only in different areas. Love me tender, love me sweet, never let me go.
that's pretty. <laughs> and I always For my darling, I love you. He's pretty all the time, Frank. Sure does, buddy. <laughs> Uh, those were the same kind of screams Frank used to get from the Bobby Soxers in the early 40s, right? You wonder what was going through his mind. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, 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 Jay, it gets easier now. All right. <laughs> Take it away. This is a song from 19, the early 40s. Frank Sinatra always called this song the ultimate saloon song, and he sang it a whole bunch and recorded it a whole bunch written by the great Harold Arlen of Wizard of Oz fame, amongst other things, and Johnny Mercer of everything lyric fame. Uh, they wrote this for the movie musical called The Sky's the Limit, and it was performed in film uh, first by Fred Astaire. Uh, Harold Arlen, uh, a great, great uh, jazz-based, great American songbook uh, composer, uh, called it a wandering song because it kind of went here and there up and down and most most of the uh, popular songs today had 32 bars this one had 48 and a uh, key change and all sorts of stuff that usually you didn't see in that kind of music in that era now sinatra recorded this song as i say he recorded it a bunch he recorded it in 1947 for capitol records again in 1954 for the film young at heart again in 1958 in 1962 in 1966 for albums and finally in 1993 for his duets album where his duet partner was Kenny G. I guess he must have liked this song. Here's the ultimate saloon song, one for my baby. I'm going to play it on the piano just to change things up a little bit from, from all those tracks that we've been using. Quarter to three, no one in this place except you and me. So set em up, Joe. I got a little story you ought to know. We're drinking, my friend, to the end of a brief episode so make it one for my baby one more for the road I got the routine so drop another nickel nickel in the machine I'm feeling so bad Wish you make the music Dreamy and sad Could tell you a lot But Joe, you gotta be True to your code So make it one for my baby One more for the road Joe, you'll never know it, but buddy, I'm a kind of poet. I got a lot of things to say. And when you're dreamy, you just gotta listen to me until it's talked away. That's how it goes. Joe, I know you're getting anxious to close. 
so thanks for the cheer. I hope you didn't mind my bending your ear. This torch that I found must be drowned or it soon may explode. So make it one for my baby, one more for the road. That long, long, long road. One for my baby. Thank you. Hey, a smoky song. Well, the next song finds Sinatra in an entirely different mood. It's the title song from his 1960 album, Nice and Easy. It was written by Alan and Marilyn Bergman and Lou Spence and arranged once more by Nelson Riddle. Nice and Easy was the last album that Sinatra made for Capitol Records before forming his own label, Reprise. With Reprise, Sinatra began to own the record business, not just shape its songs. It's an unusual Sinatra song. It's a song without a scheme, without a dilemma, without any angst. It's a song about the pleasures of life and love. It was Sinatra's unique approach to a song and his dogged pursuit of the best that made Frank Sinatra the singer. But it was his easy charm, not always on offer or display, that was always the clincher for his fans, his collaborators, his friends, and of course the women in his life. That charm is on display in this song. It's my favorite Sinatra song to sing. Nice and easy. Let's take it nice and easy. It's gonna be so easy for us to fall in love. Hey baby, what's your hurry? Relax and don't you worry. We're gonna Let's make all the stops along the way. The problem now, of course, is to simply hold your horses. To rush would be a crime. Cause nice and easy does it in time. Like the man said, one more time. Nice and easy does it. Nice and easy does it. Nice and easy does it every time. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. All right. This next one, uh, I think you've probably heard once or twice. It was written by John Kander and Fred Ebb, a couple of my favorite composing people who worked as a duo. Come on stage. Come on stage. Don't be so shy. Oh, okay. I guess, I guess I'll show up. What the heck? So it was written by uh, John Kander and Fred Ebb, and uh, they, they did uh, shows like, oh, they wrote Cabaret in Chicago. So these guys had a little, little track record. They wrote a lot of stuff for Liza Minnelli, too, a lot of specialty little songs. And they wrote this song for her, which was featured in a movie of the same name as the song, New York, New York. Remember that? Uh, Sinatra recorded it after Liza had done it. Uh, she re he recorded it in 1979, and of course it became a huge hit for him as well as Liza. And he used it as a closer for many of his shows thereafter. We, we all know the familiar opening riff, which is echoed at the end of the song too, you know, sing along. Da, 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 da. You know how that goes. Let's try it. Sing along. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want to be a part of it. New York, New York These vagabond shoes Are longing to stray Right through the very heart of it New York, New York I want to wake up In the city that never sleeps and find I'm king of the hill Top of the heap Those little town blues Are melting away I'm gonna make a brand new start of it In old New York If I can Make it there, I'll make it anywhere. It's up to you, New York, New York. In a city that never sleeps And find I'm A number one Top of the list King of the hill A number one These little town blues Are melting away Gonna make a brand new start of it In old New York And if I can Make it there I'm gonna make it Anywhere Come on, come through The new Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, what the, those lyrics, uh, if I can't make it there, 
Uh, if I can make it there, I can make it anywhere. You can think back to 1939. He's made the jump from Hoboken, and, and uh, you, you, the song had not been written uh, then, of course. But right. you just see Frank Sinatra saying those words. Uh, and it's up to you, New York. It's up to you, New York. Uh, I got the talent. Now, take me on a ride. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Well, um, another one of Sinatra's great closers, My Way. The melody and the French lyrics of the song were written in 1967 by French songwriters Claude Francois and Jacques Riveau, and recorded by Francois, who, who was sort of a Frank Sinatra uh, of the French popular music uh, scene in that, in that era. It was uh, uh, titled uh, Comme d'habitude, uh, as usual, is the English tra translation. But Paul Anka heard the song, and he set about to purchase the rights to compose the English lyrics and to arrange the song. Soon after, story goes, uh, he had dinner with Sinatra, and uh, as, as Anka told the story, uh, a couple of mob guys, where Sinatra announced that he was quitting the song business. Anka offered the song to Sinatra, hoping that he might change his mind or that he might have one more song in him. Well, as we know, Frank decided not to hang it up, but use this song as a valedictory of sorts until the end of his career. My way. And now, the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friends, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full, I've traveled east and every highway and more much more than this I did it my way Regrets I've had a few but then again too few to mention I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption. I planned each charted course, each careful step along the byway, and more, much more than this. I did it my way. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when I bit off more than I could chew, and through it all, when there was doubt, I ate my share of losing and now as tears subside I find it all so amusing to think I did all that and may I say not in a shy way is a man what has he got if not him 
himself that he has not to say the things he truly feels and not the word that one who kneels the record shows I took the blows and did it Yes, it was my way. Wow, nicely done, Bob. Stay on, stay on for a minute. I just want to tell you, you know, I, th I threw this whole idea for a Sinatra show at uh, Bob a few weeks ago because I know he likes Sinatra music. But I don't know if he's ever really sung these songs in a performance setting. Uh, so he picked, he picked out a few of the songs he, he liked and he really worked them up and he did a hell of a great job. Really nicely done. I, I'm impressed. Thanks, Bob Jared. Young. It's been, okay. Uh it's been a great experience, uh, um, and uh, we'll get somebody to do the, the Zoom stuff next time, okay? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Doing all that stuff, too, man. <laughs> all right. Go to all it, right. man. 1959. The best is yet to come, which obviously is maybe a nice message for these days, <clears throat> was composed by Cy Coleman and Carol and Lee. Recorded in 1964 by Sinatra for his album, uh, It Might As Well Be Swing, with Count Basie and his orchestra. Uh, although Sinatra is recognized for making this song popular, the song was actually written for and introduced by Tony Bennett, who's a very good friend and a staunch admirer of Frank. I'm told it was the last song Sinatra ever sang in public on February 25th, 1995. And for sure, I know this is true. The words, the best is yet to come are etched on Sinatra's tombstone. All right. The best is yet to come. Cy Coleman, Carolyn Lee. Out of the tree of life, I just picked me a plum. You came along and everything started to hum. Still, it's a real good bet, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come, won't it be fine? You think you've seen the sun, but you ain't seen it shine. Wait till the warm-up's underway. Wait till our lips have met. Wait till you see that sunshine day. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come, won't it be fine? The best is yet to come, come the day that you're mine. Come the day you're mine. I'm going to teach you to fly. We've only tasted the wine. We're going to drain that cup dry. Wait till the time's right for these times to surround. But you ain't left the ground Wait until you're locked in my embrace Wait till I draw you near Wait until you see that sunshine place There ain't nothing like it here 
best is yet to come, won't it be fine? The best is yet to come, come the day you're mine. You're gonna be mine. I'll make you mine. You're gonna be mine. Thank you.